What is up everybody? Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up the Clouser variant. This is a combination of one of my uh, favorite Bob Clouser's Clouser Minnow and Lefty Craze Deceiver, similar to the half and half. I just think it's more like a Clouser and so I call it a Clouser variant. We have a A-Rex SA220. This is a size 4. We're using some Semperfly wax thread in a uh, ADOT. I'm going to start the thread right here behind the eye and I'm going to lay down uh, about a third of the hook shank here. I like to use my lead eyes to basically measure so that anytime I'm doing any different size of a hook or different eyes, it's always going to be proportionate. And so what I have here are some me medium lead eyes. You could also uh, oversize it and do some large on this uh, particular hook size, but for this we're going to be using the medium. And you can also change the eye color. As you can see, I line up those uh, dumbbell eyes right behind the eye of the hook. I do three loose wraps and then that is where it's going to naturally kind of pawn to the hook shank and then I'll do some uh, crossover wraps here and as it starts to turn the one way I'll, I'll start rotating and do some cross wraps the other way and as it starts to get perpendicular or form an X there on the top of the shank I'll do some nice over under securing the, the wraps we just did the crossover wraps. And then as I do about 10 or 15 of those, I will then go ahead and lay down a little bit of thread right here on the hook uh, shank to the bend and then advance my thread up, come open over the eyes, and then I'll leave my thread right here in the middle, about halfway between the hook eye and the dumbbell eyes. Now, we're going to be using some uh, bucktail for this. I really like these Nature Spirit, the Select Buck uh, Tail. They seem to be really nice, good quality, especially if you're ordering online. Um, you know, you can't hold it in person. These have been very, very nice. And for this particular length in the hook, we're going to select the bucktail here from about the middle. You can see the top's a little bit long on this one. And so I'm going to pull off, I don't know how many hairs here or fibers. We're going to be doing roughly 20 because some of these are going to be coming out as I, you know, clean them up. So Remember with this, I think the number one tip I've got from watching the pros tie these are that less is more. I always think I put too many uh, fibers on. You got to remember we're going to be doubling this up, putting a little bit of flash. I'm also going to be adding some hackle, and so less is more. It's a slender, slender minnow pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and size this up. As you can see, we're left with about 15 uh, fibers there, maybe 18. And what we're going to do is I'm going to trim those and I'm going to pinch it in my hand so they form an oval, hold it down at a 45 degree angle. And this is one of Bob Clauser's trip. I'm going to, instead of pulling down right there, I'm going to pull up on the second wrap. And what that does, it just really helps spread them out over the top of the shank hook. Whereas if you pull down, it will kind of twist them around. I'm going to loosely fold that over the lead eyes, do about two or three wraps there. And then I'm just going to secure, um, the bucktail in my left hand, holding it at a slight word angled up, keeping it on the top of the shank, and I'll do some zigzagging uh, wraps down, three wraps at the bend, and then wrap my way up, leaving the thread right here behind the dumbbell eyes. So this is where I do mine a little bit different than some. Uh, if you're doing the half and half, you tie in the hackle at the rear. I've seen it done. We tie in crystal flash. What I'm using, this is some ripple ice fibers. This is the minnow mix. A really popular color for me, really effective uh, for the, the clousers I fished. And I'm going to pull out just a little clump here, twist it up so I've got a really nice tight grouping, fold it in half around my thread, and then I'm going to loosely place it right over those dumbbell eyes as I zigzagged over, and then I'll come back around and do about two or three wraps uh, on the rear side of the dumbbell eyes, and then advance my thread up to the uh, in front of them and you can see how that kind of figure V makes a V right around the uh, hook shank and since I didn't preen these uh, or align these fibers you're gonna get some that come out and this is where we're gonna make this a little bit durable um, we're going to add some Z cement right here and I'm just gonna put a very very generous amount right here on the dumbbell eyes letting it get into that uh, ripple eyes fibers and so right away this is gonna be pretty much bomb proof uh, we'll end up resining the head later, um, but for right now, I, I really like where we started. We could fish this as is. I bet you would you know, catch some fish, but uh, for this color combination, we're going to be using olive, and this is a uh, freshwater um, saddle from uh, Whiting Farms. It's Rooster, 
So it's got some really nice stiff fibers. This is the Grizzly Dyed Olive. Um, I really like these longer fibers for a lot of my streamers and uh, my crayfish patterns. And, and what we're going to do is I'm going to pull a feather here from the right side. And this just helps with a little bit of orientation. Um, you could pull them both from the same side, but sometimes you're going to get a saddle that's going to have a little bit more curve to it. And so you want to, you know, select an equal uh, feather from the other side and just go ahead. I missed that one, that one, I'm going to pull it and, you know, I'm reaching around my camera right now. So I'm going to pull it off, off screen and I'll, I'll get two fibers or two feathers that are roughly the same. And you can see how we got that nice olive grizzly, um, speckling, barring, um, a lot of different words you could use to describe this uh, when it gets wet. But I'm going to go ahead and tie this in with about three wraps so that it's on the top. And I'm going to pull it down so that stem is kind of curling around the lead um, eyes. And that's what I think really helps give it that profile, that curve, keeps it on top. And you'll see we don't have to use as much olive uh, bucktail to finish this fly. And then I'll go ahead and match up the opposing side. And this is a really, really nice feather. Um, like I said, you can get a lot of uses for this feather and a lot of different patterns. Um, but um, for this one, I really like it here in particular. And I'll just trim that out and make sure you don't mess around with these feathers too much. We're going to lay down some nice securing wraps. And you can see that those two feathers are not married, but they're, you know, they got the shank dividing them and uh, they're tied on each side of those uh, lead or, you know, basically the lead eyes are kind of forming them in place. So um, it really helps add some uh, black coloring. Um, I have really good luck uh, for some reason with these in the Grizzly. And so now we're going to add this um, olive um, bucktail on the top. And most of these materials we're using for this, um, this is probably why one of this, this pattern is probably one of the most, I don't know, well-known or widely used flies. You can color combo match anything you want to do. And sometimes the hot colors are better. I really like using this particular white and olive um, for some of the, the bass here locally. And we're going to use this same uh, technique of holding it at a 45 degree angle, coming up and over. And then on the second wrap, um, basically pulling down, but you can see it just laid nicely on top. And now we're just going to clean this up uh, by, you know, making the nose. And this is one thing that I, I don't know, I, I, every fly is going to, this is probably one of the more effective flies that's going to work um, regardless of how it looks. I like to have a, a little bit about a third of a, a nose on this, and I like to try and keep it as slender as possible. You can always build it up more with your thread wraps, but it's, it's easier to learn to keep it a little bit slender, and it also helps not to have so much bucktail uh, to remember that less is more. And so now I can use my thread wraps here to kind of just clean this up. And I'm trying to get some really tight wraps on that to secure that bucktail down and make this a really, you know, just durable fly. So that's, that's pretty much it right there. The last step we're going to do is I'm going to do a three turn whip finish. We're going to come in here with a, a marker. I like to, you know, match the, the head color. Sometimes I'll, I'll do leave it white. Sometimes I'll do it like a hot pink. Sometimes I'll do it orange for this room. I'm just going to use a little bit of a, fluorescent green and you can see how the thread's going to absorb it a little bit differently than the sharpie appears it's kind of a darker green and as we resin this it's going to look really really nice so make sure that all your um your feathers aren't you know going skewumpus you know sideways and that's why i think the eyes help to place it going you know almost vertically and then i'm going to come in here and put a little bit of this bone dry resin right here on the underneath side because i usually fish these in some pretty rocky areas and dragging it in, you know, this, these sharp rocks, these can take quite an abuse. And so I like to have a really, really good coat of resin here on the bottom to protect this fly. And then we're just going to come up here and color coat this, uh, this whole nose. If you get a little bit on the, the bucktail, that's okay. Um, just try to keep it on the nose for this first application. And then we'll go ahead and cure that up for about, you know, 10 to 20 seconds. And you can see my thread wraps there crisscross look perfect um i really like that uh, ripple ice in the middle mix you can see it's just shining through adding a translucency of uh, what uh, some of these uh, minnows would look like and what i like to do is a second coat here of resin uh, to really protect this fly i'm going to put it right there 
where this is going to take the most beating on those rocks. And then I'll come in here and I'll put a really good clump so it's sitting in on the eyes. Remember, we super glued those eyes in place, but this, I think, just really kind of creates a hard shell around it and makes it ultra, ultimate durable, if that's a saying. It's a, it's a 10 out of 10 on durability now. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, I already mentioned you can get these materials in a bunch of different colors. Um, olive and white is, is typically what I do. I usually do a white with a, a different color on top. I've also had good lucks with like a yellow and olive and also a um, you know pink and orange, pink and uh, yellow. Uh, the sky's the limit. So you can see right there, it's a really slender minnow. It's got the weight, it's gonna get down, it's gonna fish really nice. So um, go ahead and add some to your box, tie them up. I've caught bass, carp, trout. Um, haven't salt fished them too much, but I heard they work. So thanks for watching.